So hello, my name is Megan Rower. Um, I'm in a very privileged position in that uh, a couple of years ago I covered uh, Sarah Todd, our patient experience manager, while she went on maternity leave. Um, so I've had um, a real good uh, relationship with the patient experience team, but I'm actually a uh, facilities project officer. Now we're in quite a unique position in our trust, the patient experience comes under facilities, um, so it gives us a lot of access to do projects that you wouldn't normally be able to see, um, and it means we can work really collaboratively. Um, so really what we did was we were um, talking with the patient experience team and they said look we get an awful lot of comments back on our friends and family tests saying that people can't sleep on the wards, that it's too noisy or it's too bright, the lights are on all night um, and we're like surely there's something simple we can do about this. Um, so we started to research into it and thought right let's build a business case um, and the research showed that basically patients that slept, had slept better or longer or had a better quality sleep would recover faster. Now of course this is very exciting. Um, so we thought, right, well, we'll just sort out ringing around some plane companies, see what they give to their uh, customers who use uh, long distance plane journeys um, and create a sleep kit. Um, we, got, we called around all these places and we decided to purchase 1,000 sleep kits to try. Um, and we just started off with uh, non slip socks, a pot of lip balm, eye mask, earplugs, a notebook, puzzle book, and a pencil. Um, and basically, the idea was to try out four boards. Um, and that we really engaged with staff to make sure that they were promoting these to patients and um, offering these to patients when they came in to see how well they slept after having a sleep kit. Um, but obviously we needed some baseline data. We needed to know how well they slept before we had the sleep kit and after. Um, so these are the sort of questions that we asked. But it was really about understanding what kind of time did you go to sleep, how many hours did you sleep, and how many times did you get woken up through the night, and the reasons why. Um, but as you can see, the, the, the population that we sort of um, asked these questions to were the older generation, um, and mainly females, but really it was a good mix um, of both. Now, not shockingly, the items that were mostly used were the eye mask and the earplugs. Um, some people did use the socks, um, but we found that we actually had them already available on the wards, so a lot of people didn't use the socks. So it's really just the eye mask and earplugs um, and the uh, notebook that people used. But the best and the most exciting thing was the uh, data of sleep. So on average, before we introduced the sleep kits, uh, patients were saying they got around three hours sleep a night. Um, and that after the sleep kits over doubled to seven hours sleep. Now, as you can imagine, we were very, very excited about this because we sort of said, well, actually, if we're saying that better sleep or a better quality sleep or a longer sleep improves patient recovery, then we can say, actually, operationally and length of stay-wise, this will reduce. Um, and I think all too often that we put patient experience as a nice to do um, and we don't think about if we actually flipped it on his head and put patient experience first, what we could say financially, operationally, I know we've talked about length like, of stay um, and time as well. Um, so we were really quite excited about these results. Um, so what could we do next? Because all the, all the um, feedback we got from patients were really, really happy. We had a few consultants in um, as inpatients as well during the trial and they said they just wouldn't have coped without um, the eye mask and earplugs, um, which is really, really nice to hear as well. Um, so we redesigned it. We got rid of the socks, as we said, we didn't need those. We got rid of the lip balm because there were some concerns around its flammability with uh, patients with oxygen. Um, so we got rid of that as well. We also found that we had some uh, real serial puzzle book people who would bring in their own or buy them from the League of Friends trolley, so ours weren't being used. Um, but actually the questions from my care team and the information booklet was really useful. The patients were saying that actually in the middle of the night when they were worrying about what questions they had to ask the doctor and the, the ward round the next morning, they could write down and then safely happily go to sleep without worrying that they would forget about it the next morning. Um, so yeah, these, these are what the sleep kits look like. Um, so it's about a rollout of supply. Now, it was a really nice idea in the get-go that we thought we're going to place them on the pillow of every bed when we remake them. Um, it's a bit like a hotel. Um, but actually there was a bit of concern around that. Um, some of our nursing staff came back and said actually these sleep kits aren't suitable for those at high risk of falls or dementia. Because if they forget to take the earplugs out or the eye mask off, then it could end up in, a, in an injury and we, we definitely wouldn't want that. Um, so we started a supply chain as part of their ordering system. So the wards could order up to 20 sleep kits as often as they'd like. We gave them 30 sleep kits to start off with. Um, and then it was up to them and their staff to offer out um, sleep kits to patients um, as and when they needed it. Really. Um, so the next steps 
there's definitely something around going back because this was almost two years ago that we rolled this out um, and we need to go around and promote it again because I've looked at the, the data of how often it's been used and quite nicely it's been used a lot by a lot of wards but actually there's areas that we could target that maybe don't have either had a <coughs> over a staff and have forgotten about them or actually with all the other pressures that they forget to offer the, the patient a sleep care. Um, we found that quite a lot of areas they found it that it wasn't suitable for their area um, for example, in children's, parents want to be able to hear their child if they call out the night, same with maternity. Um, but we still leave some on the wards so that if a parent is really struggling and just needs that night's sleep, or same with the mum, you know, we can offer those to them. Um, also, we are running out of those 24,000, because it was supplied by our uh, Garvey Hospitals charity. Um, and they gave us £20,000 to buy 24,000 of these sleep kits. And we're running out. So um, we need to look again now at sponsorship. Now that might be the charity again, um, but in an ideal situation it would be. But if not, then we need to go out and find sponsorship elsewhere. Um, also since uh, February 2018, we've merged with Burton. So instead of having two campuses, we now have five. So we need to go out and roll them out across all campuses. Um, and it's also about sharing it. Events like these, um, so other people could go and do the exact same thing. So it's really simple an effective way to improve patient experience and yeah it's really great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.